Good morning and welcome to Holy Trinity in Fayetteville, North Carolina. This morning we mark the 20th Sunday after Pentecost and our readings come from Proper 24. We have several announcements, um, so please sit tight. First of all, we have been given the approval to increase our numbers, and so we will be doing that slowly over the next several weeks. Uh, we have good process in place. Masks are mandatory in person. We have uh, purchased several cleaning solutions and some applications to put the cleaning solutions on the chairs. And so if you wish to attend worship on Sunday mornings at 8 or 11, we're still taking reservations. But over the next several weeks, we will be increasing slowly uh, as we see fit and as we are able to keep everyone safe. Also, this Sunday on October 25th at 3 o'clock, we are holding a special liturgy for young families. This will be outside in the back by the meadows in the playground, so the kiddos can go play on the playground if they want. Um, it will be um, focused strictly on little ones, so please don't feel that they have to sit in their seats. Uh, we are going to run around and have a good time, but I feel that it's necessary to offer this opportunity for young families to come in a safe way um, and keep it outside. So if everyone could cross their fingers and pray for some sunshine next Sunday on the 25th, that would be fantastic. Also, All Saints is coming on November 1st. And so we are having a traditional necrology. That's where we read the names of those who have died in the past year. And so if you have any family or loved ones that you would like to be included in that necrology, please email those names to Susie Harris at admin at holytrinityfay.org. Uh, hopefully within the next week or so, so we can get that list up and, and functioning. Also on All Saints, we will be taking the cross that we would normally flower on Easter morning, and we're going to flower it with pictures of family members and friends who have died. And it does not have to be who have deceased in the last year. It could be any of your family members. And so when we flower that cross, we'll bring it in and set it in front of the altar table on November 1st uh, to mark the communion of saints. And last week when I was giving this announcement in person, it dawned on me that if any of you have ultrasound pictures, of children who have not yet been born. They too are members of the communion of saints. And so feel free to give us copies of your ultrasound pictures and we'll put that on the cross, those on the cross as well. I ask that you put your names on the back of the picture so that we can get them back to the rightful owners um, after this event. Also on November 1st at five o'clock, we will be hosting our first teens and tweens event. Uh, we will be walking the labyrinth inside with social distancing, we'll have a bonfire outside. Um, and so this is just a chance for our teens and tweens to get together and to kind of get to know me. Um, I haven't had a chance to meet many of them. So I offer that also to you. I'd like to take this time though, um, to introduce a new member of our church. And so for the next year, we have a new member and the new member's name is Nick. And this is a picture of Nick. Nick looks a little bit funny. Um, his name comes from Nicodemus, who comes in the middle of the night to ask Jesus some very important questions. And Jesus' answers adds light to Nicodemus's life. And so this is Nick. And Nick is gonna be with us and he's gonna ask us some very important questions. They're gonna be called, did you know questions? And these questions are gonna pop up throughout the entire year. This is the beginning of our stewardship, and stewardship should not be a season of stewardship. It should be a year-long process. And so as you begin to see Nick and get to know him, Nick will be asking all kinds of important questions. Some of them might be silly, but it's a chance for us to get to know our finances a little bit more and get to know the workings of the church a little bit more. And so I ask you to keep your eye open for Nick, and when you see him, uh, say hello and introduce yourselves to him. And you might ask Nick a question and he'll get it over to the vestry because we're gonna see if we can stump the vestry with some of these questions. Uh, with that in mind, our celebration Sunday, which will be the kickoff of our stewardship season, the year, will be on November 8th. And so keep an eye open for more events and more mailings and more information that will be coming very shortly. 
I invite you to take this time to recall the presence of Christ. Hymn 362, verses 1, 3, and 4. page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer, or in your PDF file. Please stand. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join me for the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, in Christ you have revealed your glory among the nations. Preserve the works of your mercy, that your church throughout the world 
may persevere with steadfast faith in the confession of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. Of Exodus. Moses said to the Lord, See, you have said to me, Bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. Now if I have found favor in your sight, show me your ways, so that I may know you and find favor in your sight. Consider too that this nation is your people. He said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. And he said to him, If your presence will not go, do not carry us up from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight, I and your people, unless you go with us? In this way we shall be distinct, I and your people, from every people on the face of the earth. The Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing you have asked, for you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. Moses said, Show me your glory, I pray. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you. I will proclaim before you the name the Lord, and I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will show mercy on whom I shall show mercy. But he said, You cannot see my face, for no one shall see my face and live. And the Lord continued, See, there is a place by me where you shall stand on the rock. And while my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft of the rock, and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take my hand away, and you shall see my back, but my face you shall not be seen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We shall read Psalm 99 in unison. The Lord is king, let the people tremble. He is enthroned upon the cherubim, let the earth shake. The Lord is great in Zion, he is high above all peoples. Let them confess his name, which is great and awesome, he is the Holy One. O mighty King, lover of justice, you have established equity, you have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God, and fall down before his footstool, he is the Holy One. Moses and Aaron among his priests, and Samuel among those who call upon his name, they called upon the Lord, and he answered them. He spoke to them out of the pillar of cloud, kept his testimonies and the decree that he gave them. O Lord our God, you answered them in thee. You were a God who forgave them, yet punished them for their evil deeds. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God, and worship him upon his holy hill. For the Lord our God is the Holy One. A reading from the letter to the Thessalonians. Paul, Sabanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians, in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before our God and Father your word of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters beloved by God, that he has chosen you, because our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power, and in the Holy Spirit, and with full conviction, just as you know what kind of persons we proved to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, for in spite of persecution you received the word with joy, inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living God, and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you are able for the gospel.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. The Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere, and teach the way of God in accordance with truth, and show difference to no one. For you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us, then, what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this, and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. So often, this particular piece of scripture is used to separate church and state. But that's not the direction that I wish to go in this morning. The point that I wish to talk about this morning is this idea of being tricked, this idea of entrapment. And so this question is posed to Jesus by the Pharisees and the Herodians. And just as a little backstory, these two facets never got along. They actually come together in this piece of scripture in unity to trick Jesus. And so they pose this question to him of, is it lawful to pay taxes or not? And so they're trying to trap him. They're trying to trick him. So that if he says, no, it's not lawful to pay taxes, well, then they've got him, right? Exactly. How many things in our lives are we trapped in? How many things of this world around us try to trick us, try to make us feel that we are less than? Jesus is so instrumental and so full of hope and grace for all of us in his answer. And that is, what is of the world give to the world, but what is of God give back to God? You and I, my friends, we are of God. We do not have Caesar's face imprinted on us. We do not have anything earthly imprinted on us. We are created by God. We are children of God. And so the imprint that is on us is God's fingerprint. But oh, how the world likes to play with that, right? How the culture and our surroundings like to tell us that we are less than. So many times in my life have I been led to believe that I was less than. When I was in a toxic marriage, I went to the church, I went to an ordained priest and said, help me, I don't know what to do. And the answer was, you're a better wife, he'll be a better husband. I was made to feel less than. After the divorce, I went back to that church and I was made to feel less than because I couldn't receive the sacraments. I could not be fully embraced in that community. Throughout my career, we are made to feel less than if we don't hold the pristine career title. We don't have the paycheck. We don't have the big house. We don't have the perfect children. We don't have the perfect dog. All these things in this world keep telling us that we are less than. But oh, today's reading, today's reading is that nugget that we should hang on to when we are feeling despair, when we are feeling less than, when that voice inside of us tries to trick us 
and say, you're not worthy, you mark your Bibles with this verse today. You mark this reading and go back to that. And remember at all times that we hold the image of God. We cannot separate ourselves from that fingerprint that was laid upon us at conception as we were being formed in the womb. God was forming us fiber by fiber, cell by cell, for a specific purpose, to be in this world, in this place, and in this time. None of us, my friends, none of us are a mistake. None of us are less than. In God's eyes, we are perfect. In God's eyes, we are here for a specific purpose. In God's eyes, we are the beloved. We are his children. Please, please don't let this world trick you. Don't let this world entrap you to think that you are anything other than the perfect creation of God. His beloved. His creation. Standing as you are able, let us profess the words of our faith found in the Nicene Creed, beginning on page 358 of the prayer book or in your PDF file. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Today we are reading prayers, form three, found on page 387. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. God, that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. They may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others, especially for the victims of recent natural disasters and acts of violence. We give thanks for the vibrant ministries and lay leadership here at Holy Trinity. We pray for protection and courage for all first responders and those serving in the armed forces. Send your angels of protection, strength, and patience to all students, teachers, parents, and caregivers. 
and give thanks for those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this week. We pray for those in need of healing and strength. We pray for those who have recently died and for those who grieve. I invite your prayers of intercession or thanksgiving, either aloud or in the holy silence of your hearts. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. While I was at St. Bartholomew, I had a 10-year-old come to me one day with her mom and ask me a profound question, and that was, why do we not thank God for giving us the peace before we exchange the peace with others? And that was a powerful, powerful question. And so she and I sat down that day, and we wrote a little prayer to thank God for the peace that he bestows upon us so that we have that peace to share with others. And so I'd like to share that prayer with you right now. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, we give thanks for your peaceful presence in our lives, and we ask you to be present in our hearts as we share your peace with those around us. Amen. I now invite you to share a sign of peace with those in your immediate household, and later on call or send a text to those around you. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Come on down, everyone. It's children's sermon time. Come on down, take a seat. Have a seat with me. Oh, it's so good to see you this morning. Wow, it's been a long week, hasn't it? Whew, how many of you are tired out from school and homework? Yeah, I don't blame you. I don't blame you. Well, I'm hoping you had a chance to check in on our YouTube channel and see the Godly Play video for this past week. Um, if you didn't, it's the story of the great family. And the great family was made up of Abraham was the dad and Sarah was the mom. And Isaac was the little boy. And Sarah and Abraham wanted to have children so badly and they tried so long that they had given up hope. And so all of a sudden, when they had given up hope, all of a sudden, Sarah ends up having a baby boy, Isaac. And it's a beautiful story of how Abraham and Sarah became parents and how they became a family together. And that's what I want to talk about today, is that each one of you is a gift from God, just like Isaac was. Each one of you was a surprise, a beautiful, beautiful gift. And so this week, I want you to take some time and I want you to go to mom and dad or an adult in your house and I want you to ask about your birth and how the family came to be and listen to some family stories because the Bible is full of family stories, not of our own personal family, but of the families that came before us. 
And because they came before us, they are connected to us. And so our family stories are so important. And our birth stories are so unique. There are no two birth stories the same, even if you're twins. And we have a few twins out there, right? Even if you're twins, your birth stories are still different. They're unique to you. Just as each one of us are unique to God. God made each one of us very, very different. And he put very different gifts into each one of us. And asked very different things of each one of us at different times throughout our lives. So this week, your homework is to go listen to those birth stories and come back and tell me about them, because I bet they're going to be great. All right, head out this coming week. Check in on the video at Holy Trinity Church Fay on our YouTube channel and see what we have in store for godly play. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the Most High.
stand as you are able. Our liturgy continued with Eucharistic Prayer A. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn, proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was headed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity constancy and peace and at the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom all this we ask through your son jesus christ by him and with him and in him in the unity of the holy spirit all honor and glory is yours almighty father now and forever amen Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia! The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on them in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. 
Please join me for the communion with Christ. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. And since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus. And let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Our liturgy continues with a post-communion prayer found on page 365 of the Book of Common Prayer or in your PDF file. Please stand if you are able. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. God, our Creator and Healer, may the boldness of your Spirit transform us. May the gentleness of your Spirit lead us. May the gift of your Spirit be our goal and our strength now and always, through the blessing of God Almighty, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, rest upon you and those you love, here on earth and in heaven, today and always. Amen. Hymn 596. serve the Lord.
Thanks be to God.